Hi everyone, I'm Daisy Rocha and this is what's happening in Brazil. We start by updating you on the latest news from the country. Last weekend, a severe storm plunged over 2 million households in Sao Paulo into darkness. Many residents found themselves without electricity for more than five days. To top it all off the city, chaotic scene, over 153 fell down and nearly 200 traffic lights were out of service. Italian company Enel, which won a privatization process in 2018, is responsible for electricity service in the city, while the city hall is in charge of pruning the trees. Since then, both have faced criticism and complaints as power outages have become increasingly common in the city, even without rain. The blackout in Sao Paulo sparked accusations during the first debate for the second round of the city mayor's run. Left-wing candidate Guilherme Boulos blamed City Hall and the mayor's incompetence to solve the situation. In turn, right-winger Ricardo Nunes running for re-election held the electricity company Enel accountable. Bolos also suggested opening their bank in secrecy to the public, hitting at possible undone funds received by Nunes, who did not commit. In Rio de Janeiro, six patients contracted HIV after receiving infected organs in a transplant. The laboratory responsible has been suspended, and authorities are investigating the case. For now, police have arrested Dr. Walter Vieira, the lab's technical manager. From January to September this year, fires in the Brazilian savanna or Cerrado rose by over 100% due to the drought and human activities. Most burned areas are farms severely impacted by agriculture. However, settlements and other protected lands saw a reduction in fires compared to last year. In today's story of the week, you will watch how severe drought in northern, central and other areas is affecting the population and raising electricity costs. This led the government to consider bring back daylight saving time. Electricity bills in Brazil are already more expensive. Since October 1st, the country's electricity agency, known as ANEEL, has applied the so-called red flag to electricity bills. The justification is the historic drought recorded in various Brazilian regions, but there are controversies. From a hydrological point of view, we are experiencing the biggest crisis in the Amazon basin. However, the Amazon Basin is not representative considering hydroelectric plants in Brazil. Looking at this aspect, the main Brazilian basin is the Paraná Basin, which doesn't have empty water reservoir. Under the argument of reducing electricity consumption during this period, the federal government studies the resumption of daylight saving time when we set clocks forward one hour. But the possibility is controversial. So, when I used to work outside the home, it was very bad because daylight saving time only affects those who get up very early to work. I thought it was a good thing because it would save electricity and the climate would be better, the heat. We had finished work earlier, so I thought it was good. For energy expert and leader of the movement of people affected by dams, Gilberto Servinsky, the proposal to resume daylight saving time is a smokescreen for the real problems in the Brazilian electricity sector. There's a debate about the need for daylight saving time to save energy. At the same time, as they are saying this, electric energy is being thrown away from wind, solar and hydroelectric power. According to Brazil's electricity system operator data, the Jupia plant alone on the Paraná River has been releasing around 2,300 cubic meters of water per second in recent days. 
In addition, Sarvinsky points out that while the population pays the rising bills, more than 5.3 billion U.S. dollars has already been granted in the form of subsidies by ANEO for 2024, of which around 75% benefits large companies, such as mining companies and industries. Nós deveríamos poupar a água. Nós deveríamos poupar o We should save water. We should save the wind. Use it efficiently, not throw away what's paid for. We should save the sun and not throw it away and let the solar power plants, the wind power plants and the hydroelectric power plants shut down. That's what the national system operator has to explain. And who is the national system operator? Who is in charge of it? It's a meeting of businessmen from the electricity sector who own the hydroelectric plants. In this week's Culture Talk, you will watch an interview with singer Fafá de Belém about the city of Nazaré, one of the world's most prominent religious festivals, held in the city of Belém do Pará in honor of Our Lady. The city is a Marian Catholic procession, but the faith in Our Lady of Nazareth lives in everyone. Everyone is in the procession. Our faith is inclusive and happy, so it brings together people who come from the Chiquita party, those who attend the Arraial da Pavulagem, Babalorixás, atheists, Jews, Muslims, religious and non-religious people, and even the evangelical community opens its churches to distribute water to the pilgrims. I don't know of another procession like the city de Nazaré. What's interesting is that nobody asks about your religion. Nobody cares if you have money or if you are poor, what your sexual orientation is. Everyone attends the city de Nazaré. There is no other religious or cultural event of this size and power. Religiosa, cultural, com essa, o tamanho poder. Quando eu saí daqui, eu comecei. When I moved to another place, I realized people didn't know that the city of Nazaré existed. So, for 50 years, I've been bringing people to see the city. I started bringing groups of friends, renting entire floors, and we'd join the procession. Then, 15 years ago, I had the idea of creating an area like the VIP areas in Bahia's Carnival, but I needed to figure out precisely how and where. Pará wasn't cool back then. Nobody was talking about Pará, Belém, Pará's music and cuisine, let alone the possibility of hosting a conference of the parties here. Muito menos tinha a possibilidade de uma cópia. Verá que a corda entrelaça todos nós, sem diferenças, costurados num só nó, amarra feita pelas mãos da mãe de Deus. Nós somos muito grandes, nós influenciamos. We are huge. We influenced Rio's fashion in the 20s, and the Modern Art Week of 1922 in São Paulo was designed here in Pará. Great intellectuals and authors traveled to Pará. Composer Carlos Gomes set up the conservatory here, which trains new musicians to this day. Suddenly, with the rubber going to Malaysia, the city emptied, but the city became increasingly influential. And this thing about us being enough for ourselves is very strong among Paraenses, the people from Pará. At the same time, there is a foreign culture, Miami's way of life and fashion, that pushes aside our regional culture, so to speak. 
When I moved out of the state and adopted the stage name Fafa Jibelin, I always took people from here, composers, musicians, and I've been doing this fusion for 50 years. Whenever I discover someone new or a decade-long artist, I bring them closer. Today, the varanda has become a powerhouse, and the sarau is an object of desire, and I love it. It started with five local singers, and now we have 40, and I frequently say, make more room. The hardest challenge is for the people of Pará to know that they are the hosts. We are the ones who welcome visitors and no partner will tell us who we must be. The hardest challenge is for us to talk about our problems and qualities. The hardest challenge is to be aware of our power as a people, to keep alive the memory of the cabanaging, our first great revolution, which brought together the elite and the people trying to make us a united people, regardless of Hugenate's opinion or the dependence on the then Portuguese crown. Did you like the show? So hit the like button and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. We'll see you next week.